one, two, three. The meeting is being live streamed. There you go. I think we are live, right? Okay, everyone. Uh, welcome to episode three for uh, Bradley Williams. Um, basically, we have done we have done uh, two episodes before this for Bradley Williams about his journey into IT. Uh, and before we start. Quickly, I am just going to introduce the, the admin panel and Bradley William himself, and then Hefe is going to be taking over. So, of course, Hefe is our admin, community admin. She has been she has been around in this uh, whole community from day one. Just like Bradley, she also started with us, and uh, we will have an episode only for her after this. We are going to come up with the dates. Uh, Steven is being has been in IT for a long, 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 long time. Keftech, you already know who that is. He's a Superman, uh, the guy who loves printers. And then we have uh, Hemi, who is a sysadmin, and now nah, actually more than a sysadmin now. So, well, Bradley is the person that we want to talk today because he has this history of how he started with no degree, no certification. And, uh, you know, he, he's a motivation to myself for this platform as well because. Every time when we go out there and we tell people that, look, it's possible, and then we get this, hey, oh, well, how is this possible when the whole world is saying that you need uh, ABC? But then we're saying, look at Bradley right here, and he's a, uh, he's also uh, kind of like helping this mission. So I just want to thank uh, him for his time, and he has been with us for so long, and he's doing this journey with us because not a lot of people do that. So I just want to say that um, uh, thank you to him for doing this. So now I'm going to move over to Haifa and she can now take over and uh, she will guide us on how we are going to do this whole episode. If you want to ask questions in the chat, if you're watching us on YouTube, put your question in the chat. We will take your questions after the questions that we have already received for this episode and we will answer your question later on. Haifa. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, it is nice to finally be back with all of you on uh, a live session. I missed you all so much. Um, and like uh, Donish said, um, this is the fourth episode for Brad, um, and we're excited to hear about his story. Uh, Brad, can you give us maybe like a quick three minute, an elevator pitch from where you went to where you are now? Um, yeah, so I started um, with Job Skillshare doing a, like a three month or so internship. And then after that internship, I was doing, I was doing labs on the side and stuff. Um, we had like, um, kind of like tickets and stuff that was sent in for that internship and things. So we all could get a feeling for stuff. And then that's when, um, Donish and Kevin stuff, they started telling me, go and apply for some help desk jobs. It's, it's time to start breaking into the field. Um, and that's when I was a, um, overnight stalker. I looked grocery store and I started applying for jobs, um, kept getting rejection emails and things. And that's when I finally um, landed an interview. I um, interviewed on site actually, instead of doing it remote. And then I went to the second interview and then that's when they basically offered me the job. Um, and then through that time, I, I kind of knew where I wanted to go next, uh, which was a systems administrator. I was kind of leaning towards like the network role, but then I, I, I really hammered down and said, I wanted to be a sysadmin. And that's when I started reaching out to other people on my job that were sysadmins. Um, starting to get some guidance from them, what they do at the job. And then I started doing stuff at home that might prepare me for it. And then that's when I, I actually started doing some overnight um, work with one of the sysadmin managers. And that's when, that's when stuff really started to pick up. And I started doing tickets in that queue and stuff. And then once the sysadmin manager left, another one came in. And then that's when I basically was, I basically went into that role as a systems administrator. I think you're muted. I think you're muted. Yeah, maybe she's having some sort of issue. So, uh, well, Haven, when you um, when you come back on the mic, then we can uh, give it to you. Uh, are you there? Let's see. Is this better? Yeah, it's kind of. It's better. Yeah. Give me a minute. I will need to fix this. I will be right back. Sorry, okay. go ahead. Oh, no problem. No, I think you're good there. 
It was getting better, yeah. So maybe she just she just switched the microphone, but it's okay. So once she's back with the original mic, maybe we'll come back again. So uh Bradley, I think this is the one of the things that we we're doing this whole episode is for people who are basically uh, following your uh, journey. And I know that when you started a year, year and a half ago, uh, I'm sure some people might have approached you. Um, do you have any uh, situation or scenarios, or maybe you have a story where somebody, uh, after you did your first episode, did, did somebody approach you like, hey, I want to be like you? Did, you? did you have anything like this on LinkedIn or anything else? Um, yeah, I had a lot of people actually messaging me, um, wanted to know more about my journey and stuff after that episode and things. Um, and I messaged them back and stuff. And I also had people messaging me on Discord and stuff, um, wanting to learn more about my journey. And and how do you guide them now? Like, do you have like some sort of uh, resource or you message them, hey, do this or this? Um, so, I mean, uh, a lot of them, I referred them to you know, on your job skill share and KevTech. And then I also told them about what I did doing like home labs and stuff like um, what you can do, like set up a home lab. If just say you don't have all the resources at home, you can set a virtual box or something. Instead of buying like a physical server or something like that. Cool. Um, now, um, this is a question that I, I will ask almost every sysadmin. Um, when you became an official sysadmin, how was the feeling? I know that some people, when they become a sysadmin, they're happy in the beginning because you know you're, of course, you're getting more. Uh, pay your so you're like okay i'm there now this is exactly what i wanted what was your feeling in the first few days or month probably like was were you stressed because i feel like there is this natural stress that that comes with it right it's like you're a little worried about it uh did you have that sort of worriness like and how did you tackle that uh, I really wasn't too worried because, I mean, they already told me that they're not just going to throw me into the fire. Like, I think like the first few days, like I, I did like one project and I was with other assignments too. And I was already at the company for like a year and a half or so. So like, I, I kind of knew how things worked at the company. Um, I kind of knew like the infrastructure and stuff. So, I mean, I wasn't too worried. And even like almost two months later, I'm, I'm still not just being thrown into the fire. Like I'm still learning things gradually and stuff to like really, um, Get you like you kind of got phased into it. Like you were like, okay, right. I'm, I, I'm not, because I know some people, they get into this sysadmin job because someone helped them with their resume or, you know, uh, even if they're in IT support positions, but then somebody helped them and they get an immediately a, a full sysadmin job or they just get into this MSP world and then people start calling us like, I'm super stressed and it's too much or, or too broad stuff going on. Um, but in your case, you're saying that if you are already involved uh, in basically learning things uh, on time with other sysadmins, then I think that stress goes down, right? Right, yeah. And also doing like the home labs at home stuff to really, like, like if I didn't practice anything at home or do anything or anything with the other sysadmins on my job, yeah, I would definitely have been way stressed out because I would have no idea what's going on with the environment and stuff. My understanding, sorry, uh, can you guys hear me now? Yep, that's good. Yep. My understanding ahead, also is that you've been working with uh, Aaron or, or as we know him, Hammy, um, on like PowerShell things and whatnot on the back, like in Discord and DMs and, and such. Is that accurate? Uh, yeah, I did message him a couple, a couple of times so far to ask him about some script questions because I I'm asking that specifically so people can know that like people within the community um, are also very helpful. Um, and so if you have any questions, always come to us. Um, but what is the most difficult thing about your transition? What was the most difficult thing about your transition? Um, I, I really don't know my most difficult thing. Um, I guess maybe maybe seeing like the emails come in for requests and stuff that were like way over the top of my head like I, I want to help everyone that I can I mean maybe not be able to like s solve an email or something like that um to resolve the issue I, I mean maybe that was my difficult part but I mean like th they didn't really throw me into anything um at first like I was just doing like one project two projects at a time so I mean it wasn't too difficult on my end um, when I um, transitioned over 100 percent and I think that's I have a question. I have a question on that. That, like, so if you let's say you don't have it, but I'm sure everybody have this one thing in their back in the head that I don't know this pretty well. Do you have something like that as a sysadmin that you're seeing now? 
is there something that you're seeing but you're like yeah i'm not i'm not too comfortable with getting that ticket because you know it's always this one thing like for me it was always the sequel like i was always one from sequel right <laughs> so <laughs> and for a lot of text printers or another one right they, they just don't like printers is there something that you think that sysadmin right now that that you feel like you may you are going to get it because you're the sysadmin right and you're like ah i i hope i'm prepared for that is what is that um maybe like the tickets that come in about group policy like stuff that you have to really dig into it and stuff um like like you said sql we we have like a dedicated sql person so i i i really don't even handle sql at all um if if we need sql we we, we go to the dedicated sql person like like our our sysadmins like we we kind of have some that know all about like the sysadmin stuff and then we have dedicated like we have a dedicated virtual team and stuff like that so i mean we, we kind of like all, all expert in a few systems um instead of experting in trying in like everything like a subject matter expert and a few systems or so um i'll open the floor to the rest of the admins to see if they have any questions uh kevin shall i start with you yeah, sure. So, 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 Brett, uh, I guess, um, and this is like it's a random question for me. I like to I, I like to ask these questions. Um, so at, at some point when you when you transitioned over as a I guess as a as a sysadmin, um, did you did you have like that 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 feeling of what's it called imposter syndrome when you when you um like did you have like a self doubt because you don't understand how this worked or that worked or you don't know what, what this was? Just just wondering. Uh, not not too much. I mean, because even even before I transitioned to a sysadmin, like I was doing like some sysadmin stuff before I even transitioned in. So I mean, it wasn't like all brand new to me or anything. Like I, I like people showed me around in the group policy before I transitioned. I was inside of Exchange admin a lot. Um, I was in vSphere a lot. Um, I, I really the only thing that really got to me was maybe the Linux side of stuff because mm -hmm. um, one of my first projects was. Um, spinning up a Linux box and then installing it, creating something called parse DMARC. Um, so we can kind of get our um, DMARC aligned and stuff like that with SPF and DKIM. So I really think that was one of the most hardest things to learn was really like, getting into Linux and creating like a huge script to automate all of this um, for the emails when they come in so we can get reports on them and stuff. And, and I'm going to ask you one last question for me. The other one is because obviously you're not, you're not my age, you're not Donish's age, anyone else's age over here. So um, how do you stay motivated as a person that is uh, uh, on the younger side of things, staying, uh, staying away from like video games and social media and all these other things? So how do you stay motivated as an individual in, in IT? Um, I mean, I, mainly I'm, this field, I mean, you can go very far in this field. So I know it's a never ending field. So I know if I if I do my work and stuff, I can go very far in it. And plus, seeing you know, like the LinkedIn posts and stuff about people moving up, people getting jobs and then. Um, as many might not know, but I am starting my own website and stuff to post content, documents and stuff on on so people can learn. And then if, if someone comes and messages me and says, "Hey, I got a job because of a few documents," well, you post. in in other ways, he's saying, "Do you party?" Because right. <laughs> you know, when once you get serious with this career, then you stop partying, right? That's this right. is this is why I lost my hair because. I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's not you lost your hair a long time ago, Donish. Don't blame him. <laughs> All right. So, uh, uh, how about Steven? Yeah, Steven. Yeah, Steven. Uh, yeah, I have a question for you, Brad. Like, what is the day in the life of assist admin? Like, what do you do? Like, how is your days go? Your weeks go so far? Like, can you explain to the people out there, like, exactly what your day is like? Um. So, at, right now, as a junior assist admin, I've been on the job for about not even. Actually, I think today hit two months. Um, so I, I mean, in the mornings, I, I get in. I, I we have a, um, a, a website. We check up all of our backup jobs on, see what failed over the night and stuff. So I check with the backups and things. Um, check out all the emails and stuff. I, I, re I read some news in the morning um, to see if there's any anything out there that we should be worried about. Um, I see if there's any tickets that came in. I mean, I, I, I kind of just monitor your systems and stuff to see. You know, it's if something goes down, then it has to be brought back up. And if I can do it, or if I have the ability to do it, I'm going to try and do it or get the team involved and stuff. Um, I, th I think right now the main thing is just like m managing the ticket queue and responding to emails that come in. And then kind of just, you know, poking my head around, like I'll go in group policies, see how policies are set up. Um, I'll go in vSphere, just look around and stuff. Um, I have a Linux box set up in, 
and the environment now at work. So I kind of just mess around with that. Um, so right now I'm kind of just poking around with things and just. With your, with your lab and at home, what prepared you for this? Like with um, your own labs. So people out there that are doing their own labs at home, what kind of prepared you to, for this job kind of like more than this, just like a help desk position. Right. So um, the sysadmin that was mainly helping me before I transitioned fully into the role, he recommended I get a physical server. Um, so I, I went on LabGopher and I, I went ahead and bought a server. I, it's a um, Dell G7, uh, HP G7. And then so I, he, and he was very kind. He actually gave me a full enterprise EXXI license. So I was very, very, very fortunate of that. And I just started building um, VMs and stuff and joining everything to the domain, um, creating group policy, getting around Exchange Admin. Uh, we actually set up a whole um, Exchange Enterprise environment. So I think it's a, it's a good point to note for people who uh, are always thinking, where do I start sysadmin learning? It's, it's a common thing that a lot of people have this thing that what's the base of starting a sysadmin uh, learning? We can go into details later on, but virtualization, like once you know about virtualization, if you think about it, every single company right now, if you go out there, 98%, 99%, you're going to see some sort of virtualization being implemented, whether they use VMware or Hyper-V, most likely VMware. When you have a good command of uh, virtualization or how it works, then it really makes your sysadmin learning easy. Why? Because those servers are inside the VMs. So the networking, the 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 kind of like the pieces that you're looking at, like, you know, uh, domains or uh, everything is over there right now. So this it's kind of like your visual approach towards learning becomes easier. Now, I'm not saying that you should go into uh, extreme uh, VMware type of learning and become certified in VMware. It's just that learning virtualization makes your sysadmin learning makes it a little more easier in a real world uh, skills. Just wanted to add that. Also, uh, I'm sure the fundamentals were very helpful. Um, but Stephen, I saw you unmute yourself. Do you have any other questions? No, I was just gonna like maybe elaborate on going back to Donish. Before all the VM craze, back when you started, what, what did you do? When I, or, yeah, like when, like, like you first got into it, right? And the VM wasn't really that maybe that popular back then. And you're yeah. like, okay, well, I got to learn all the on premise stuff. What yeah. did you do to try to springboard? Yeah. So you, you see, the thing is this that it's, it's a step. So it, it, that's what when Hafer say that uh, fundamentals, the for system and the fundamental is the basics of networking. So knowing networking is just basically a, a kind of like a gateway towards any advanced level skill. So even if you, you were doing a lot of hardware, uh, back in the days, a sysadmin was heavily involved in, in knowing servers at the hardware level, where you have to basically go into the data centers and you need to understand different type of wiring, different type of you know uh, connections that we had to do to make the server run and work. KVMs were pretty famous, right? We had to understand KVMs because we had to get into systems very quickly. But that sort of hardware related skills are going drastically going down. And because of this whole last year, uh, you know, problem, um, we we now have what? We have a sysadmin. We don't call it a sysadmin no more. We call it a hybrid sysadmin these days. So if you go to indeed.com, the new title that a lot of people are trying to push them, their HRs to change their titles from normal sysadmin title, make me a hybrid sysadmin because I want to be marketable. When I go out and when they benchmark my title, it has to make sense these days. So for a lot of us, it's the hybrid sysadmin that we, we usually call, but most of us are now into learning virtualization and a cloud right now. This is what this is where things are going. Uh, but uh, I, I, a person like me who has been in the sysadmin world, when I saw everything uh, getting shrinked in data centers, I just realized that still virtualization, even, I mean, I'm still too young when it comes to sysadmin world because virtualization has been there for a very long time. And, and, and that's where the key is. If you learn virtualization, you know your fundamentals in networking, the sysadmin job becomes pretty easy because uh, it's already broken down to you. Um, we will get into this a little bit more detail in, in some of these questions. I feel like if we should go over uh, that sequence that I think Sanish uh, had his first question in that I sequence. can start there. Okay, yes. so let's start in that and then we can 
add every everybody's uh, tips into that. That way, it's a little more better sequence. Okay, I just wanted to ask quickly if uh, Aaron had any questions. I know that he's busy with the twins, so he might not be here. Nope. Okay. So we'll start with uh, Sanish. Um, he asks, sorry, I'm not going to say. They ask, could you please tell me about your journey from help desk to sysadmin? I think we covered this a bit. Um, so you don't have to, if, if there's anything you'd like to add to that uh, answer that you provided earlier, Brad, or we can also move into the next uh, question. So for this, what I will do, Brad, I will put a your playlist, episode one and episode two in the chat so people can just kind of go back and, and kind of see your story. But if you want to add something, you can go ahead and add. Um, I, I, I mean, maybe I can give some guidance on how to transition, I think. I mean, doing labs at home and stuff is, I mean, yeah, that can help. But if like, if you're at your job and you want to move up inside of that company um, or even move out to another company and, and move higher up, I, I think you should really talk to the higher ups in the company, talk to the sysadmins, see what they do, see if they can kind of like, see if you can kind of like shadow them for a couple of days um, and, and really feel like what it's like to be a sysadmin. Because I think, I, I mean, as I transition, I think people are going to realize that there's more stuff to a sysadmin than just dealing with like a Windows server. Um, there's way more stuff inside of there. I, I mean, yeah, yeah, you can list off all these vocabulary words and stuff, but if you can't actually do it, then you're, then if something comes up in that job, I mean, everything's going to fall down sooner or later if you can't actually do it. Brad, I'm going to tack on to that because you asked, because you said something really interesting. Was there... Was there anything that surprised you when you moved into the sysadmin role? Like, oh my God, I didn't know that we did this. I know that uh, you're usually surrounded by Danish and them who are sysadmins. So it's a little bit easier for people like us um, to know what the role is about. But I'm wondering, like, was there any technology that, that like really threw you off? Um, to be honest, not really. Um, I mean, before, as I said before, before I transitioned, I kind of knew what the sysadmins worked with and stuff. Um, and I, I was working around sysadmins for like over six months or so. So I kind of like knew what they did, not, like nothing too technical or anything, but I kind of knew what systems they worked on and stuff. But no surprises. Right. I, I, I wasn't really surprised by much. Uh, I mean, much of anything at all, really. Okay. Um, some of these names I'm not going to say because I cannot pronounce it and I, I don't want to um, butcher names. But this person asks, how did you decide what, what your niche was in IT? I'm sorry, say that again. How did you decide what your uh, niche was in IT? So how did you decide? Yeah, it's like, yeah, how did, how did you decide decided that you want to become a sysadmin, right? That's kind of like what I'm right. going and, with this. Instead of like a systems engineer or anything else, why did you decide to go this route? Um, so, I mean, I thought the main reason, I, I was planning to be like a, a network guy or something, like a network admin, but then I saw like the whole side of virtualization. Um, the, the, I mean, there's just so much that you can do as a sysadmin. And, and I, I like to touch a lot of technologies if I can. And I, I think sysadmin was a route for me to take if I want to be touching a lot of technologies and stuff, you know, dealing with different operating systems and things, um, dealing with the whole virtual aspect of stuff. So I, I think that's really so, what So I think to. from back back in, back uh, when we listened to you, episode one, you wanted to become a cybersecurity um, uh, analyst. I, I believe that was, this is where you wanted to go. So. Like how did how did that switch happen? Like your mind, uh, where did it say, okay, I'm not gonna do that? Like, what made you do think like that? Uh, so, I mean, as I was thinking, like a cybersecurity analyst and stuff, I think for like I I, I want to understand like everything around like as an analyst and stuff. So I think slowly moving up the ladder as I go would be the best bet for me. So when I transition to a cyber analyst role, maybe like I, I kind of know the sysadmin stuff, I know the help desk stuff. Um, I, I kind of know. Like, so you somebody. still want to do cybersecurity, right? Correct. Okay. Yeah, I mean, sooner or later, and, I'll be and I think that's a perfect approach because if you were a sysadmin, if let's say you were a help desk, you have that skills, and you have this sysadmin skills, and let's say you got this security skills now, you you are right. a different level then because right. you're a jack of all trades. At yeah, that. you you could you could break into things that a sysadmins will do mistakes, right? They they're not into uh, securing. Uh, they're going to implement projects, but they're not going to sit down there and try to uh, 
do every single thing that a, a security person will do. <laughs> so, and a security person wouldn't know too much about how sysadmins are doing things. And that's why right. Active Directory training became very famous in cybersecurity world. It was not something that I've heard too much, but last five years, every cybersecurity uh, trainings that I've looked at it, oh, we got to have Active Directory, right? That was not the thing back in the days. It was always like Kali Linux break into a system, hack into it, fix it. But I wasn't, I wasn't seeing too many of this, uh, you know, Active Directory stuff. But now it's like the realization of knowing networking for even cybersecurity uh, uh, prof uh, professionals and knowing about Active Directory and domains is just critical these days if you're working in a corporate environment because if you have to do a PCI compliance or you're trying to. Uh, you know, harden their systems or try to see if their systems are vulnerable. You just got to know about domains, right? And that right. just became pretty clear. So that's a good approach, I would say. Definitely got to approach. Right. I, mean, I, I think if I slowly move up the ladder and stuff and gain like a solid foundation of like sysadmin, how this level and stuff, I think my stress level is completely reduced instead of me just being fresh out of associate's degree and just jumping into, trying to jump into a cyber analyst role. I mean, I think, in my opinion, people should try and slowly move up the ladder and gain a solid understanding of certain foundations. I think people get impatient and they just want to get out of help desk as soon as possible and do um, right, right. whatever it is that they, that they always dreamed of doing. What you're saying, uh, you, you don't want to make 250K right now? I mean, <laughs> are you going to pay me that much? <laughs> Aaron, I see you're on here. Um, I will open yeah, here. I was just going to add to that. Um, I mean, we just had you know, like a live training session with KevTech on hacking Active Directory, you know? And I mean, that like while he was talking about all the different systems he was and what he was using to penetrate Active Directory, he was talking about, you know, SMB and all these different tools and things that he was protocols that he was attacking you know can we, we, can we mention admin. can we mention the he because i'm sure that's probably yes good. i'm gonna yeah, or, drop the or put I'm their gonna... link yeah link in their chat in the chat so then they, people can watch yeah, it was in, infosec it's... pat that's who it was and, All right. thank you infosec pat for doing this yeah and uh, i think it was a great experience because you know uh steven was down in the chat like explaining things because you know to uh, Pat, you know, everything to him was already second nature because he's already been through all of those different trainings, you know, and jumping into sysadmin role is a great place to learn how Active Directory is set up and those kind of things. And then once you go into cybersecurity, you're like, oh, how can I attack Active Directory? How can I gain access to those things? Which then puts back on your sysadmin saying, how do I protect my Active Directory? You know, it, it, it kind of pairs all together you know when you're sysadmin you're usually a lot of blue team you got to do a lot of blue team stuff even though you're just a sysadmin because your red team or your pen testers that you've hired out or you have on your on your team they're going to be saying hey i was able to access this and i see a a password in clear text you know and they're like oh, okay now i've got to you know secure up my uh, environment so i really enjoyed and, that and, and also it's like you know when you probably have you know when you were when you have this audits, every year we do audits, right? Because if there's payments going on, there gotta be PCI compliance and everything. And if you're a sysadmin and let's say you are only two people, you don't wanna look bad too. They come to you and they're like, look, you got this actual directory so opened up that I was just, I just got in like in five minutes or like, there you go, your passwords are so weak. So uh, of course the people are just gonna look at, oh man, you get like, that's just like an, a natural thing for someone to just say, okay, aren't these engineers or admins doing a better job to secure us a little bit, right? Even though they may not be involved in very much securing, but it's, it's a basic thing. A lot, of, a lot of IT people, they do mixture of things. Like not, not every company is so big where every single title is and every single job is like, okay, now you're a, you're a sysadmin, so this is your job right here, right? And we are working in a, in a, in a market where a job can be all, all in one man IT show for, for some of these nonprofits or corporations. So it's just good to learn. If you learn it this way and then you have this mindset that I'm going to go later on and tackle it that way, I think it's a great approach, uh, Bradley. That, that shows that you have patience and you're mm -hmm. going to just get better at it. Okay, let's move on to the next question, Who, wh which came from Bryce. 
they asked, what do I need to do to gain more experience? I know we talked about already home labs and whatnot. Is there anything else that you would recommend? Um, so if, if you're trying to break into the field, IT field, I would say, I mean, studying for certs on the side. I mean, you don't have to technically take the cert, but just maybe study for it. And then, I mean, mainly, I think, I mean, as, as I've seen on Cavtex channel and stuff, I think the main thing that is helping a lot of people right now is doing the home labs at home and really gaining the, the actual skills you need to get into the IT field. I mean, it's not just about vocabulary words and stuff, all this um, theory stuff. It's actually hands-on skills that you're going to need. Uh, if, if you're trying to move up, I, I would say definitely talk with the higher-ups and see what they recommend, see how maybe they got into the field. Um, kind of network on LinkedIn, um, see what people can provide you. I, I, I mean, I, I mean, the hands-on skills are, I think, what the IT field is, is really going to these days um, for people to land jobs. Yeah, I, I I'm going to add something to that. It's like I, I always tell people these days, and this is something that new, you probably hear me saying this, like this is a new thing. Every IT person, I tell them that you are a walking business because when you learn skills, you become very uh, kind of like you're in demand because a lot of people are looking for technical people these days. And we don't have many. Uh, and even though you may think there's there are many, but there are many places or jobs that are not filled yet. So don't think that there are many IT professionals out there. It seems like that, but it's not there. So one of the things that I would suggest people is to get into sharing knowledge. Like, for example, you learn something, go to LinkedIn and try to use that post and share. Because when you do that, people around you in that area or people who is in your network they see that. And then when you keep doing that again and again, they see there's this person is doing something different. Most of the people don't do that because they're, they have a confidence issue that, oh, what if my thing is too basic or maybe it's not something too good. At this moment, at, in the beginning, you will kind of like block that thinking. Your mindset should be like, I am doing this for myself so then I can create this these blogs and later on then i can show people look uh, from past six months i've been doing blogging right it's an experience and you are going to get better with this so don't take this lightly because i know the power of sharing things when you are sharing and you're teaching things even if you're doing it in a blog type of methods you will learn because somebody will point things out and they will say oh no you did a mistake over there you fix it and that's how you learn, learn, learn. And your experience is all about learning. Nobody is sitting over here right now and then can claim that they became an expert in IT. And still after 15 years, I don't consider myself expert. I'm only good at the things that I have done multiple times. If you give me a job right now that Brad is doing, even though he says I am too new to this job and it could be a little junior level, if he gives me his job, I will still be stressed because I don't know his mind. And I, the only thing that I might be better at tackling because I understand the mindset, meaning I am going to sit there, I'm going to do it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times, and then I'm going to be like, okay, this is in my head right now. That's it. This is all technology. That's how we learn skills. The other thing that's good about sharing on LinkedIn is um, for recruiters, or if you're willing, or if you're interested in like switching jobs, uh, for them to see that hey, you know what, this person really is active in IT. And I think maybe KevTech can um, talk about that a little bit more. What was the question? How uh, sharing things on LinkedIn uh, is helpful for like recruiters to see and if you're applying to new jobs and whatnot. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's all about LinkedIn branding. I always talk about that. Uh, I talk about fixing your LinkedIn profile. Make sure you have professional pictures. Make sure it's not a selfie of you having a beer or whatever, you cannot do that. Um, make sure you build your connections. And by by that, I always talk about genuine connections. So, sometimes it's not what you know, it's who you know. So when you know somebody and that person, when you build those connections with that individual person, and and, and I, I, I the way I do it is I, I, I add somebody and it gives you the option to add a note, right? So if you go on LinkedIn, if you add a friend, there's an option to put a note in there. So I, I actually will literally sit there Type out a note, make it as as polite as possible. And like, okay, I'm adding you because I see you talking about this, or you're doing this, or you're teaching this, or I see that you're hiring for this job. So you want to make so it polite. Personalize note. it. Yeah, personalize. You're not a robot, so you basically you you put a personalized note. You connect with that job recruiter. You connect with that person, 
And that's the same thing when it comes to uh, trying to get knowledge, right, from an individual person. Take them out for coffee. Maybe get, maybe send them a Starbucks coffee. Maybe invite them for a Zoom call. Do a, a session with them, and and t- uh, tinker their brain a little bit, and then we'll figure out how they how they got that position, how they got that job. So it's a, the, the LinkedIn piece of connecting and building genuine connection is very important because at the end of the day, everyone in, in on LinkedIn they're human, and they they all will help you if you ask politely. So that, that's what that's the that's the um, connection part of it. Uh, the other part that's important is actually showcasing what you know or what you could do. Because like a hiring manager is like, what can you do for me? Why should I hire you? I don't know what you know, right? So you want to make sure you put a project on your LinkedIn profile. You share your videos. You share your stories. You share things you know, because a manager's like, oh, wow, I didn't know he could do that. I didn't know he knew how to do this. Man, I want to hire this guy. This guy is awesome. He knows his stuff. So you want to make sure you do that as well. And you showcase what you know what certifications you're working on. Um, just put feature stuff in there, whether there's a video on YouTube, any of those things will help you. The hiring manager will definitely notice you. So you want to actually do a lot. There's a lot on LinkedIn branding stuff. It's very involved, but definitely will help you out to answer that question. Uh, Steven was kind enough to drop your LinkedIn branding uh, video in the chat for everyone. Go watch it now because we're live. Obviously, watch it after. <laughs> um, all right, so Jordan asks, what skills did you learn? Brad. Um, skills that I learned as in like help desk or like sysadmin. I think sysadmin. Yeah, I think sysadmin. Work, yeah. Because you've been working with other sysadmins throughout your help desk, uh, you know, journey too. So maybe what you can kind of like tell us the main ones that you think, oh, I learned these new skills that, that kind of helped me or things like that. Um, I, I would say the main skills that really helped me were kind of like the Windows Server aspect of things like group policy, DNS. Um, I, I don't really touch DHCP, DHCP. That's like the network team kind of stuff. Um, IIS and stuff. Um, Linux, I think is, I'm really going to have to start learning Linux a little bit. Um, I, um, VMware, um, Exchange. Um, I mean, search up common like backup programs and stuff to back up your systems, back up your files. Um, did you I mean, did you got into some some of these skills like officially just learning it like going back to your because I know you have lab access and everything have you went back to certain skills and said like, oh, I'm gonna do this because I need it? Uh, actually, for the practice labs, I haven't really been on that too much lately. I've been kind of just like doing my own stuff on my home lab um, and seeing what I can break and seeing what fails and then try and fix it and stuff. Googling errors. Um, I've been mm-hmm. actually picking up PowerShell scripting. I. Um, the system manager. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody just asked about like how much, uh, how much is scripting important in your role, and do you write your own scripts? I know Steven is very proficient in that. So, do, how much do you, how much scripting is important in this right now? As you, as for now, now, like, yeah, there's a thing that you, you everybody say that, oh you need it, but for now, like as you see it, and do you write your own scripts? Oh uh, yes, yeah. so, I mean as of right now, I don't think scripting is really too important with what I'm doing right now. Um, but I mean, definitely moving forward and stuff, I, I think scripting is going to become uh, a main thing so I can automate things on how I do stuff. I, I did, me and a um, coworker, we did create a full script. And basically it creates a file sharing the correct um, file. It adds security groups to the correct OUs. It adds the people, users to the correct security groups. Gives a security group, the, um, oh, yeah, the file, um, the security group is added to the folder. And it gives the correct modifier, read, write, access, stuff like that. Um, so we we had a, we basically automated that, so we don't have to go in AD, create security groups. Um, we we have like a standard naming convention on what the security groups are named after. Um, so we, we kind of like basically automated that. So so this means of, you have this, I would say, luxury of comfort to go back to your sysadmin, whoever wrote that script, or have more knowledge to say, hey, you know, I'm not worried. I'm I'm a little worried about this area, or maybe you you did some changes to it but you want to get another eye like experienced eye to check it so you do have that right right correct yeah and that's pretty good because not everybody's going to have that sort of uh, help at the higher levels when they are totally busy or they're doing something else but i always tell people that try to find that connection because if you get that you get to that level where you are connected with somebody's more experienced uh, that bonding is super, super helpful uh, helpful for your career to you to grow very quickly. Whether, it, uh, well, it's, it doesn't have to be just job, by the way. It can be this community right now because this community, these people are working 
in real IT jobs. Like I know for sure Haifa had a lot of help from other people who are more experienced in, in some certain uh, skills that we are, it's not available online, like very openly, right Haifa? That's right. So um, I've yep. been learning Python with, um, it, these are obviously uh, available online, but uh, Python from someone in the community, uh, Kev Rocks. Yeah. Um, he's been he's teaching another Python. Admin it's been, he's another admin, but he's uh, away this weekend. Um, but yeah, it's it's little things like that. It's building a community. And if, sorry, I'm going to interject for a second. But um, if I were to give someone a piece of advice for their IT career, it's find a mentor. Um, find someone who can guide you. That's how, I mean, I think most of us over here, that's how we started, right? With some sort of mentorship. And if we didn't start it that way, it's more like, yes, we had this online mentorship that we were just asking questions from communities, but it was kind of hard to, to find different type of questions in different communities when it's not live. So I think having a Discord type of communities is just uh, another level. Um, and I and wish you get that, perspective from yeah. so many different people in the field. Like you get perspective from software engineers and programmers and 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 people who are in cyber and sys admin and help desk. Like and a lot of people, really, uh, yeah. And a lot of people think well, as soon as we say mentor, people start getting scared because ping, they're they're thinking it's going to be money. Our Discord communities, Kevtech, uh, JSS, these communities are free. So I was talking to someone like, yeah, we have this community, and we do all this stuff. And I said, you do this for free. Yeah, yeah, that's that's why we call it community, right? So, and we're always open or we're always this, uh, we have this thing that we always say, if it's servers or if it's something like we have to give you, yes, it will cost you money, right? There's no gray area in this. We don't go left or right. If you want servers, if you want access, if you want someone to pay for your stuff, then you will pay. Um, but if... Uh, on the other side, a lot of people don't even know that these community exists. Like Keftech has a very healthy community for tech type of, uh, you know, careers, trainings, JSS itself. We do all this stuff right now. This is all free stuff. And we have over 1000 videos, full training, full blown trainings on our YouTube. So it's all about the next step is your approach. Are you going to take that step? Are you going to do your own research by just at least registering and see if they're whatever they're talking? Is this true? You go in, you experience it yourself, and then you make more decisions after that. So, um, so Art Han asks, how many years of help desk role do you recommend before looking into sysadmin? I, I, I think that really varies. I mean, some people, they, they learn stuff a lot faster. Um, like some help desk roles, like I, I've seen individuals in help desk roles where they don't even really do stuff. Um, and then some help desk roles, and like it's it's there there is no tier level. Like you do, if you see some come in, you got to troubleshoot it. Um, so I mean, if you're in a help desk role and you're doing a lot with Active Directory, file shares, um, Exchange, I mean Outlook, I mean uh, Microsoft applications. Like if you're really diving into all that, I would say I would say, say about like a year, year and a half, um, to really start getting comfortable with stuff. And then that's when I would. I mean, I definitely don't wait a year and a half. And then just start picking up on other stuff to learn, like kind of learn new stuff um, while you're in that help desk role to get yourself ready for that next role. I mean, picking up another uh, another like quick quick thing to learn, like learn learn the Windows Server every every few days or something. Just pick up something new and just learn it very slowly, and then trying to tackle your actual job um, and and really learn on that. But I would say probably about a year, a year and a half if you're really doing a lot at the help desk role. Uh, Art Khan had a, uh, another question. Uh, do you need Linux at a high level uh, to become a sysadmin? I know that we talked about this, but I'm just going through the questions. Um, from the um, I, I think it, I, I would say not really. I mean, but then again, it all depends on the environment that you're going into. Um, like if, if you're applying for a role and you see their system, if you see their Linux heavy, then yeah, it might be, it might be good to really learn Linux a lot. But I mean, in my role, we're really not too Linux heavy from what I'm seeing. So I'm just kind of gradually getting into Linux. Um, so from my perspective, I think it's just checking out the environment and see what they're actually using. Admins, do you have anything to add before I move on? I was going to say, I, I remember when I met Donish in person and, and um, we were in Maryland, I was in Maryland with him and I'm like, and I'm like, where the hell was all this stuff a long time ago? 
because when we, me and him started IT, even Steven started IT, we didn't have any of this stuff. We didn't have Discord. We didn't have Reddit. We didn't have things on YouTube. We, there's certain things that weren't available. There's certain things. Aaron knows certain things weren't available. Like, where was all this stuff? Now, there's, like, so much free stuff out there that um, people get overwhelmed, actually, when there's so much stuff. You just got to pick a couple pick a couple of Discords, come by, ask for help. Um, like Donnie says, nobody here is going to charge you for money. Just come by, and, you know, we'll, we'll get we'll, – we'll, we'll do labs and, talk, you know, spin up some VMs and talk about it, so. Yeah, like – Back when I started back in 2001, there was nothing like this. It was zero. I mean, you went to you went to school for it. You read a book, and that was it. It kind of like it was all on your own, and you had to absorb that book. And I, I, there were these books I read and read and read and read, and I got the freaking dummy books to read all this stuff. Like, what the heck are they talking? Because nobody was else was going to ever explain it. But back then, now you guys have so much more resources. Take advantage of everything you can because it is golden. Everybody that's doing everything, everybody that's doing all the stuff, Donis, Kevtech, everybody, everybody that you're looking at right now, we, it's just amazing that you guys have all this stuff to give. Many years ago, it was never like that. Today, it's a whole different ballgame, and it's really different. And I'm learning a lot more today than I did back in 2001, even paying to go to school. You know, just hanging on with these guys or just being in the Discord and all that stuff and hanging out with Kevtech and Donis and everybody, you know, Haifa. Hammy, I always learn something from them every single day that I talk to them. So definitely you guys are in a different place and take advantage of it because it does help. And that's where Brad got his lift off. Eight, I mean, eight when he was if he was 18 years old back when I started, there'd be no way he'd be a, like where he is today. He would have to really work. He would have to be some kind of scholar, some kind of really smart kid, bright. Today, you know, you don't have to be. You, he says he just like living proof that you can do this by doing the free stuff without paying for it. Donish Hossus offers everything paid to get you guys up with the VMs and all the virtual machines, but there's a lot of free stuff out there to get your feet wet, to get in yourself in the door, and that's when you take off. And that's what, you know, Bradley did. So definitely take advantage of everything that you can. So. Aaron? Yeah, I was going to add to how to kind of, you know, learn the environment you're in. Because, you know, when you're in help desk, you know, Brad said, oh, you a year, a year and a half, start looking into it. But when you're running help desk, you see those tickets come in. You see every ticket coming in. You know, um, sometimes the tickets need to get escalated to the sysadmins. Um, when you see those tickets come in that look complicated, um, you want to jump on that ticket. You know, it, sometimes it's easy to coast and say, oh, I'm just going to take all the tickets that have to do with password resets today. I'm going to take the printer tickets. I'm going to take the, the um, Excel tickets. That's not, you know, that's where you want to start when you're jumping into a help desk. You know, you want to get comfortable answering those questions um, and, you know, taking those tickets and getting those easy numbers, you know, so you kind of shine. But once you get comfortable in that, I mean, it shouldn't take too long to really understand how to kind of troubleshoot those things. And you'll feel that yourself. But like once you start understanding that, you want to jump on those more complicated tickets when they come in. Even if all you do is you take the you take the ticket, you jump out, you reach out to the person, you say, hey, I just want to understand what's going on with this ticket. I might not be the one person who's going to help you out, but I yep. want to get you to the right person. And what that does is not only shows your manager that you are interested in moving forward and gaining those knowledges, you can then, you know, your name is now tagged on that ticket. So even though you pass it off to like a sysadmin or something like that, you're going to be able to go back and look at that ticket and see how that sysadmin resolved it. And even if they don't maybe make the greatest notes, you know who resolved that ticket and you can reach out to them afterwards and say, hey, I, I kind of took ownership of this ticket and I had to pass it off, but I'd like to know how you, like what you had to do you know, sysadmin wise to get this fix, you know, and yeah. that, that gets you, that gets you the experience, gets you the connection and shows management that your willingness to learn. So it, it gets you, you a lot of places. I think if, hey, if I remember, uh, or Brad and, and when we were doing our projects, if you, if you guys remember when we were doing ticketing system training, what do we talk about ticketing system? Ticketing system should not be taken lightly by any IT professionals. As soon as you get a new job, Ticketing systems is, is going to be your best friend in that company because there's so much loaded with pure information 
and answers and everything and the infrastructure, everything is there. But let me tell you something. What, what Hemi just talked about, Aaron, what he talked about is super tip. But before this tip, there's this scaredness inside us as an IT person, as a help desk person, as a new person. We think that servers are so advanced that even if you look at that ticket, you're trying to just poop, you know, you're trying to transition, like, you know, you want to give that assignment quickly because you want to get it away from you. And, and you do that for years. Then you realize that, wow, I spent five years in help desk, but I'm still not confident. Why? What, what is the reason? That tip that he gave you is super tip. And before then, you really need to make yourself, you need to ask yourself this question that, look, I'm going to tackle this. And how do you tackle this? You got to get the VM, put the server on it and start messing around with that server. Start touching that server. As soon as you start touching that server, as soon as you start making Active Directory, as soon as you start opening DNS, DHCP, you don't have to be the master. I am not a master. I'm not an expert till this date. Even though I'm at the senior level of sysadmin, that doesn't mean anything. But I am so confident that I can go back and take on anything. And because I know the practical approach towards things, I, if I start touching it practically, then that's where that, that layer of like your scaredness will go away. And for a lot of help desk, people being stuck in help desk, this is the major reason that I've found in a lot of people where they get comfortable, one. Second, if they even want to move up, they're scared to move up because they think things are very advanced out there. It's not. Is this that you need to go and just open it up and start playing around with it a little bit? My favorite thing that I learned was uh, get uh, get comfortable being uncomfortable. Uh, so if you see challenging tickets in your queue, jump on those. Just like the the gentleman on here are saying, uh, Stephen, I saw you unmute. Yeah, I was just going to touch on those tickets. Like um, I'm starting now in my job to look at the backlog file that comes in every single day. And these hard tickets that really are been open like for a month, month and a half or whatever, sometimes. And I'm looking at them like, I could probably fix that. And I reach out to the customer and I give my interjection. They're like, oh my God, you make it sound so easy and break it down. And you actually know what you're doing and you can fix this. And I actually fix like, I, I think about, I, I would say this month about 10 tickets that have been open for a long time. And when I got done with those, those customers were so happy. They're like, oh my God, you were the only one that ever reached into this, dug into this, stayed with it 24 seven until you figured out what the darn problem was. And let me tell you, it was the most gratifying feeling that you can get. Those hard ones that nobody seems to, oh, I don't wanna do this. But if you fix them, the customer will say, you are the man, you are the woman, you are, whoa. And until the next one comes in, of course. But for that one second or five, 10 seconds, that is why you do this job. Because you fix something that the customer was frustrated with. Other techs maybe may not be as good as you are, or maybe are not deep diving. They just look on just on the surface of the water. You actually stuck your head in the water and found the actual answer. But those things are what make this job Super important. That is why every single day I wake up and I love just going to work because I love solving those hard problems. I love being a problem solver and with these technical things, but that's what drives you. And all you guys that are starting, this is what's going to drive you. And when you do solve that really first ticket, it, you're going to say, damn, I did that. Why? Because it wasn't as hard as I thought it was. Yeah, exactly. And in really they're not but people just don't want to look past the first reaction. They don't it's want to It's intimidating. It's very intimidating. Yeah, it is. But, as, but if you talk to the customer and say, you know, ask them more deep dive questions, you can get, oh, all right. We just pushed out like an update the other day. So maybe it messed up your outlook. That is what the reason, or you like your Zoom client or something like that. That's the reason why it's not working. Oh, well, nobody's ever asked me that question. So those are the things you guys think outside the box. But I'm telling you, the first ticket you guys solve, I'm telling you, it's like, it's just the best feeling in the whole entire world until you get the next one you can't do. But, you know, for that, for, like I said, for those couple of seconds, you just feel on top of the world, you know? It's okay. I've been given a time limit. So I'm going to uh, also move through uh, these questions that have been asked. Ganesh, uh, and I'm sorry if I'm saying your name incorrectly, um, is asking what difficulties did you face through, throughout your journey, Brad? Uh, throughout my journey, um, probably just like like the, 
IT is always moving very fast. There's always new technologies coming out. There's always new new bugs that are being deployed and stuff. I think just really trying to pick up on all these technologies at once um, is was really my hardest thing to do. Like I kind of just like I, I slowed down in my mind and said, let me just learn one thing at a time and then go to the next, or maybe just learn learn two systems, but take them very slow at first and then try and learn and not just try to learn the whole system in one day. I mean, that's just never going to happen. Um, so I, I think like the, the technologies that are very, very in demanding right now, there's just a lot of them. Um, so I think just picking one or two, maybe, I mean, might help you out a little bit. Um, but I, th I think that was my biggest um, difficulty moving forward and stuff is trying to learn all these technologies at once. Um, the next question is, what specific things do you do on a regular basis at work? What can I do on my off time to get myself into system administration? Maybe I know that we talked about labbing and whatnot. Is there anything like super specific that you would recommend? Not just, oh, just lab. Um, so I think while you're labbing, like create documents on how you did that lab. Um, like really do that lab over and over again. And then see, hey, I just added uh, I just added a piece into the domain. Can I do it a different way? Um, there, there's multiple ways to do things in this field. I think once you start um, learning multiple ways, you might find a way that's quicker for you. So I think just really creating notes and stuff and, wh and why you're doing this and like things like that would definitely help you out. Um, so, I mean, it's not just about labbing. You have to create notes on, um, put, put a little instruction booklet out there um, on, on how you did stuff. The, this question, does it have the first part? Because I think it's two, two questions, right? It is. The first part oh. was, what specific things do you do on a regular basis at work? Uh, we kind of touched on this, but I don't know if you want to get into more detail. But... Um, so, I mean, is that question directed towards like me as a sysadmin or like when sysadmin. I was a yeah, sysadmin? Yes, yeah, so, I mean, we, we kind of already touched on that. I mean, like in the morning, I'll go and I check all the backup jobs. Um, see if any failed. If they failed, I'll go see why. Um, and then and then we run them. Possibly, I look at the daily emails and stuff. Um, I always check on the news to see what's out there. And then and then just managing the ticket queue and stuff. Um, just I mean, if, if the, I mean, if a ticket comes in the sysadmin queue, I mean, like I, I might it, it might be the last stop. So I mean, I, I have to solve it then and there. A um, uh, question from Mike in the chat was, uh, Do you have a personal knowledge base you keep? Um, I, I definitely create a lot of notes at work and stuff. Um, I, I, I use OneNote a lot. I think that's like, I create like pages and stuff on there of like different things. Um, I also use Word and then I've also, I am, I'm creating a website now. Um, so I can, like, it, it kind of motivates me more to really lab every day and, and put stuff out there um, for everyone else and myself. Um, and then I also have a knowledge base at work um, that, uh, that everyone else has. And then also at work, we have like a, a wiki page and stuff that I can go into. Um, it kind of shows how things are set up. Um, I want to mention something that is not too common, uh, at least with most of the people that I've spoken to. Uh, some companies don't have a good knowledge base. Some companies don't have a good knowledge base at all. And the tickets are a mess. The titles are a mess. So like instead of it being Excel crashing, for instance, it would be hi, need help. And no one in on the service desk team or help desk team will rename that. Uh, so sometimes you do have to pivot over to other means instead of an internal knowledge base or instead of um, looking through like previous tickets. Uh, that's a real problem that I had to face at some point. Um, let's move to the next question. Okay, so this is a really interesting one. I'm currently a service desk technician tier one a tier one, tier two remote. Do you think for me to work as a sysadmin next would, I would need to work on site for my next job? Are there system admins that work remote? Uh, so when I, uh, when I transitioned over, I became a, I mean, even when I was in the help desk role, I was still remote. Um, I still have it. I still had an office I could go to if I wanted to. Um, but since I switched over to the sysadmin role, I'm 100% remote now. I never have to go back in the office. Um, I think since everything is going into the cloud and stuff, I think there's going to be more roles that are going full-time remote. I mean, you don't have to be on site um, to really do any of your sysadmin tasks. 
unless unless you're like on premise, you have to go to like data center or something. Um, but I, I think like for like the training aspect of stuff, I think it comes down to, I mean, can, can you learn through a meeting or did you want or do you want to physically be with someone while you're learning new stuff? Um, me personally, um, I uh, all of our sysadmins are like some are in California, some are in New York. I mean, they're all, they're all around the place. So I think it's like I, I didn't really have the option transitioning into a sysadmin room um, to really have someone next to me all the time um, physically. So, I mean, and, and I, I, for like me, at least, like people can tell me or show me what to do and stuff, but I'm then like, can I gain access, like poke around in here and stuff? Because I think that's how I learn best. It's just, it's just poking around in the applications and stuff. And then um, regarding that, um, if you do need to shadow a sysadmin or a senior sysadmin on your team, how do you go about requesting that from them? How do you ask them for help to show you since you're not in the office and you can just like peek over into like their office and be like, Hey, I need help with this. How do you go about requesting help remotely from your team? Um, so, uh, so we, we have like a, um, a, a dedicated um, team chat and stuff. So I'll, I'll poke in there and stuff or I'll, I'll just, um, I'll, I'll message them and be like, Hey, can, can, can we get on like a quick call or something? Can you share your screen out um, to show what you're doing and things? I mean, it's, it's, it's really nothing is different being than in the office. I mean, you can share your screen online. You can see the screen in the office. I mean, I think the only difference is you're remote. Um, you're not actually seeing that person um, in person. But I think just ask them to share their screen out, have like a quick call, schedule something on the calendar if they have time. Um, and then we have a question from Manjeet. I'm sorry if I'm saying that wrong. Uh, where should I start from if I want to learn programming languages and its applications? I'm sorry, there's, there's a lot of different programming languages out there, as everyone probably knows. I think Code Academy is one um, that's out there. I mean, a you quick know, Google search, I mean, can do it. Um, if you're trying to learn PowerShell, I think Hammy mentioned it before. It's called like a, a learn PowerShell in a month's worth of lunches or something like that. I've seen that's a pretty good book to go by. I think it comes down to what programming language you're trying to learn and what you're trying and to do. And also, we want to we want to kind of add this because um, if people are watching us, uh, a sysadmin normally don't get into programming in in majority of their like you know uh, jobs. They they may be involved in uh, later on when they get into DevOps type of things, right? Because then that that's where they kind of get into the more of that automation stuff. But still. Uh, a programmer job, a development job, a developer is totally different than a sysadmin. Uh, right. Yes, their knowledge is there. Uh, a lot of people start learning uh, Python because there are, there are scripting that sometimes that really helps you with Python that uh, automate your stuff on the servers. And that's where a lot of the sysadmins who get involved in the web hosting type of sysadmins, and they, they get into that Chrome jobs and stuff like that where they automate stuff because most of the web servers still these days are using PHP and other things, and they automate these things uh, for those type of clients. Um, and if you are a normal sysadmin for companies, usually you don't get involved, but let's say you do get involved, um, then I think it's mostly uh, you, you are gonna find some sort of framework or script already written, and then you just kind of poke around in that, but uh, you will know the, the the basics. And there's like Code Academy where he just mentioned, there's uh, Free Code Academy, I think that's the name of it, right? Free Code Academy? Um, there are many. There's learning tree, something like that. There, there are many other there's, platforms that does uh, trainings. There are also um, applications. They're called middleware um, that will help you uh, learn automation, and it's so much easier because it's uh, what do they, I think they call it like click programming. It's like that drag and drop programming um, or automating, um, and that was very helpful for me when I moved into my engineering role. Um, uh, and then learning Python now. Um, another question was, how many interviews did it take for you to land your first role? Uh, so my first role, I had a uh, uh, over the phone interview with the um, the HR person. Um, that was very quick, like just a brief summary about my resume and um, what I was doing on the side and stuff. And then I went in to the office. I met with the um, team lead and the manager. Um, and then about, I think it was maybe like a week or two later, I met with the CIO um, over the phone. It was supposed to be in person, but then it went over the phone. And after that, that's when they, um, the HR person called me back and offered me the job. So it, 
technically two because I wouldn't really consider the first interview really an interview at all. It wasn't like really any any like hard questions or like or like soft skill questions or things like that. So really, I mean, yes, it was three, but I consider it really like two. Um, how many jobs did you apply to? I know that this was like the interview process, but how many jobs did you apply to before you got your first pin? Um, I think it, I mean, it was definitely like close to a hundred, I believe. Um, I was just kept getting rejection emails after rejection emails. I actually, it was, a, it was another internship. Or no, I'm sorry. It was a contract position. Um, and I, I was kind of steering away from contract positions. I wanted to be full-time with a company. Um, that's just, it's just something like about contracts I don't like. Um, they called me up. I had an interview with them. Um, they said they called me back. They never did. Um, and then that's when I finally landed the interview. Um, the company I'm at now. So, I mean, I, it was probably about, probably around a hundred or so. I mean, I mean, sometimes if, even if you're in a booming state that has a lot of IT um, jobs and stuff, I mean, getting your first job can be hard sometimes. And KevTech, what do you, you have a lot of experience in this area where a lot of people are coming to you say, KevTech, I am using your resume, but I'm not getting a job or JSS the same way. What do you tell them basically? Uh, let's say if I come to you and say, I applied to... 20 places, what would be your response to that? Uh, with, with me, I always, if it's a, if it, it's the resume, right? So I, I usually tell them they have to do, they have to do, use the resume a couple of weeks and don't apply to 20 jobs. They have to be, it has to be more than that. Obviously it's more than that. So it's just, I mean, we heard 100, 200. Yeah. Uh, and, and, I'm and one I'm of not, those not, people. And there you go. I mean, and, and I'm not saying that you should just, Get your resume now, and now we say, "Oh, Danish or Kevtech mentioned 200, so you're going to make it to 200." I think the the best approach is to kind of like tailor your resume uh, for different. If you see a big difference, I wouldn't say too much tailoring because that's again you're going to be only spending 10 applies, and then you're going to spend that time. But mm -hmm. getting to and understand your resume, understand the titles, or so you can do a little quick tailoring rather than getting into extreme details, right? Because if you're going to go into that extreme details, then I think it, it just adds another dilemma into this that, oh, I'm it's too much. It's too much uh, energy. And I think what we have found out in JSS and KevTech uh, community, when people don't have, some people get lucky, like uh, Brad, I mean, he, he kind of transitioned into the same job. Uh, but there are people who will have struggle in this. It's not going to be that easy. It's not going to be a same job transitioning into another big job. So the, 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 the common thing that we all know based on how many people come to us, get trained with us in communities, on website and all that kind of stuff, the, the, no, the natural response to them is that how many did you apply when you say that I'm not getting a response? So a lot of time I see like, oh, I did like 10, 10, 10 places. I'm like, oh, that's nothing. Do you know? First of all, let me see your resume. So if I look at the resume, the resume is really good. I'm like, oh, good resume, but 10 is nothing. 10 it may not even, some people may not even open it. They may open it and just put it on the side. So they're got, the number has to be high. Yes, I know it's hard. I know rejections will happen and most of these people will trash it. But that's not our way of getting an IT job these days. Our way of just knocking a door. There's too many jobs available. But you got to keep knocking, knocking, knocking. Okay, I gotta, I'm going to try here. That's when you're getting into IT. When you have skills... Like I said before, if you backtrack, you are a, a very valuable valuable person to companies these days because a technical person these days is, is a pretty valuable uh, person to a company and people will start looking for you. When your skills are out there and when you're out on LinkedIn, when you're out on other platforms or YouTubing or things like that, people will come and ask you, are you available for a job? We have something available for you in this area that you're so good at. And I I've been watching you. Trust me, things happen. People will come and approach. When we did our first contract with the college, we didn't approach the college. The CEO approached directly to us because they're like, oh, you guys are doing this and this and this. Can you guys come help us out? So things, people, people are looking for you, but you got to be out there. This is something that I like to promote too. But of course, do it uh, with privacy and security, but don't also put things that will mess things up for you. So you don't want to be on the social media and try to be so like open and not take, not looking at your post 
what you're posting, you could be posting some funny stuff, but for you, that may be funny, but for professional world, that may not be a funny thing. That's right. your, your pictures, your wording, <laughs> all that kind of stuff. So be out there, but use your common within sense. Within reason. Yeah, yeah, within reason, exactly. Uh, Chuck Williams is asking, is it better to apply to a company or a staffing agency as a consultant? My first uh, job was kinda, through a staffing kinda, agency. That's kind of like tough one because both can can do good for you, right? Staffing can work with a company and companies, direct companies, I feel like when you have that chance to just go in straight to the HR email, that is another thing that I, I but you know, I used to tell this in my training that please find an HR email, but it's been 10 years. That that method is gone and almost Obsolete. gone. Yeah, people are not putting their HR emails now to get resumes directly and they're going to open and get hacked. Right? <laughs> That's how it happened. They're going to go through some system. So yes, I think you should use all methods that are available to you. When you're applying for jobs, it got to be on LinkedIn these days. LinkedIn is another direct thing they they have this apply section in their their companies these days right you go in and say, click on apply and then you put put your resume out there um so you got to be out there in many formats they, there's no one format what do you think about rpa and machine learning that might not be for this um, session but for anyone wants to answer that is probably too advanced for this whole episode. Maybe we'll talk about it, like how machine learning can uh, take over some of the jobs. A lot of people have this concern that, you know, AI machine learning can maybe replace some of the tech jobs, but that I st it's like IPv4. We started, when I got into college 15, I don't know how many years ago, someone told me that IPv4 is going to be obsolete in next to two years. And we are still looking at IPv6 right now. And I said, I'm like, I'm not, I don't even know some of the things that's happening in IPv6 right now. So think about that. That's not going to happen anytime soon in today's world. Technical things will get, uh, get modernized. Yes, there will be new positions, which I am going to be uh, pushing towards in JSS as well. For example, uh, a lot of people don't like to get into a, a very classic help desk jobs, like where they get into help desk and they know for sure that these jobs are not that uh, user friendly for a career. Like it's pretty, you know, like some jobs are very like, hey, it's fast paced. So is there something alternative available to that? So there are now positions like Microsoft Office Administration. I, I, knew, I never thought of this, that there's going to be a title that people are going to say Office 365 Admin. What the heck SharePoint is that? SharePoint admin. SharePoint <laughs> admin, Teams admin. What are these titles? And if you look at the money that they're paying, 80K, 85, 75, these are just starting. So yes, the reality of IT is that things are going to get modernized, but I can guarantee you it is so much in cloud, like from the administration side, that a normal users cannot say that, oh, we're just going to get automated stuff going on and we're going to replace these hybrid admins with this automation. That's not gonna happen anytime soon. If it happens, then maybe, yeah, people can come back to us and, and I can guarantee this will be a video. This video will be here on YouTube. And maybe after 15 or 10 years, people will say, ha ha, you say it's not gonna get replaced, but I'm gonna say, ha ha, it's been 15 years. I'm almost dead, you know? So. so <laughs> no comment. <Okay>. So, <laughs> so my thing is, is don't get into that, please. A lot of people who are new to IT, they are thinking way beyond, but there's too much going on right now. And like I said, jobs are not filled. If you want to get into IT, there is too many, too many open positions for you, but it's always good to learn something more advanced for future because at the end of the day, things are moving towards that. And if you're young, I think that, yeah, that's kind of makes sense then. Maybe you learn something very advanced at the high level, but then you keep working so you can convert that money into your own uh, career investments and you kind of go into more and more hands-on with more advanced stuff because anything can happen i'm sure nobody would like to be stuck in active directory for 10 years right or, few, or even two years these days we want to get then, out of the help desk sorry i wanted to ask the more seasoned people on this um on this zoom call how do you know where the technology is going or where the future is taking us? How do you prepare yourself for that? Other than reading the news or anything like that, is there anything that's 
not very typical that you do? I will, I will give you this. I'll start this answer. Maybe other people can kind of follow around. So if you are in IT um, and you're working, and this is the, the only people that can give you this answer is when they are working in a, in a job where you are dealing with projects. You are the person who brings new ideas. Like when you sit with the higher ups, like directors, CEOs, CIOs, and then there is this meeting that happens two years earlier from that main project that they're going to invest, let's say $1.5 million or, you know, that much many, many dollars. For example, a lot of companies uh, use a CRM and CMS systems, right? This is kind of the core of every single company to, to how to interact with customers. So they companies, the way everything works is based off retention and keeping the, the members or keeping the customers because at the end of the day, you, you need to run your business, right? So your technology revolves around where your money is coming from, right? So the easy answer to this is that even the technical technology around that will change. For example, didn't we see a big, big change in office, sorry, in exchange on premises versus exchange online. You tell me, do you see any good amount of jobs uh, dealing with exchange on premises these days? There is none. It's going to be, yeah, they're going to pay a lot of money, but who cares? This, this, this is becoming, is, is going, right? So it's like the same thing. There were programming languages that were very highly in demand 10 years ago, and now nobody even think about them. So the way we know is when we work on these projects and we bring cloud into it. So we removed that exchange. Now we went to cloud. So what's attached to that cloud now? Azure, um, automation, uh, virtualization in, in, in cloud now. All of that sort of stuff, things are moving towards that big data or how to analyze data. So we are getting somehow, we are becoming more of a DevOps people. So if you ask me, where are we moving? In future, sysadmins are going to be the DevOps because you will be forced to do, uh, like, for example, pushing code towards certain area. But when you push the code, then there is this middleman that requires infrastructure access and you got involved automatically. For example, I was working with a development team and they wanted me to, to work with them because they didn't have the Azure access, right? The, somebody had to give them that high level access so then they can get to the DevOps and, and they because it was related to some VMs, then boom, there's all, they already got stuck. And I, I, I got stuck where? Because I didn't know the code. I'm not the developer. So I needed to know both now. I need to know a little bit of DevOps because I needed to push that code for them and give them access, understand how DevOps works. And on the other hand, they need to know about a little bit of VMs and things like that. So you see how it got mixed. So if you ask me anything that will be revolving in cloud, I think that's where things are going. We have already seen data centers got shrinked almost 90% of them. If people have 20 servers, now they have five or six servers in-house or some people totally remove their whole data centers from their companies. So yes, we are going towards cloud pretty fast right now. That would be my answer. Aaron, do you have anything? Or sorry, Kev. No, I was gonna, I was gonna, I was gonna say that that if you if you uh, if you're on LinkedIn or if you follow like the technologies, like you could follow the technologies. Like I'm subscribed to Cisco. I'm subscribed to Microsoft. I'm subscribed to Google. I'm subscribed to RSA. I'm subscribed to Okta. I'm subscribed to all these other technologies. That's one part of it is being subscribed and following those technology trends. Then the other part is, um, and this is just me. This is what I do. Uh, and I've been doing it a lot this year, actually. Um, joining a lot of summit events. So I've been joining a lot of summit events, whether it's uh, technology learning, machine learning, AI, learning how technology is going to move in the next couple of years. It's going to happen next year and the year after that. So I've been joining a lot of connections with, different technologies. Like I, I actually joined uh, AWS, the Amazon Summit, like like literally two months ago. And I'm like, oh, so this is where the technologies are moving. And then I'm seeing the, the difference in sysadmin where uh, it's no longer, uh, it's, no, it's cloud, it's Office 365, but now I'm seeing that a lot of companies are moving more into DevOps, like Donish was saying, where you need to know Terraform, you need to know Puppet and Chef, you need to know all these other things 
that are not beyond that's like some linux some some uh, python like it's, it goes beyond what you would you would have done a long time ago so now it's, they're asking for more linux stuff it's coming it's going bulk, bulk, it's going straight into linux now and I, and i could see i see that devops is, is definitely going to come around and you can you're going to have to learn how to do that and that's why i see that trend and i see the other trend where um there's a combination of both so like what i mean by that is this combination of being a sysadmin and then also you're a network admin so now you have to know you have to have ccna knowledge and you have to know uh, uh, juniper and a couple other technologies uh, cisco meraki and stuff like that so i've been seeing a trend and a change on that as well so um, to answer that question, you have to you have to just stay up to trend with technology because it's always changing. Um, things are always going to change, and you want to make sure that you're following like social platforms. Like what I did, I joined the, the AWS event. Good opportunity to learn. Good opportunity to build LinkedIn connections, connections with job jobs and hiring managers, and a good opportunity to see what technologies are are going on and what where they're moving to. So that's just my advice. Um, I know that we are running out of time very quickly, so I will open the floor, floor to Bradley uh, to see if he has anything else to add, uh, since this is your session and we slightly hijacked it, sorry. Um, but, um, so yeah, any anything you'd like to add, anything that you think is important uh, that you weren't asked about that you wish you knew or you, you wish someone had told you before you switched into this uh, sysadmin role that you're in? Uh, not too much. I would just say steer away from people trying to tell you you need the certifications, these degrees and everything else. I mean, as I said before, I think it's just coming down to the hands-on labs. Um, and like Hammy mentioned before, I, like you said about taking those, um, harder tickets, um, I actually took those sysadmin tickets. I went to the sysadmin. So I was like, Hey, this is how I might solve it. If I had access, um, uh, how, how would you solve it? Cause I'm sure you've probably seen this before. I mean, that's what really kind of like kind of got me in the way into the sysadmin role and telling them, hey, I want to be a sysadmin. And then when they see you want to see be a sysadmin, and then when they see you coming to them asking for help and stuff and what you might have done, I think that's really, really going to get your name out if you want to move up inside of that company. Because um, I think a, moving a person from just say help desk to a sysadmin network role in, in of a company um, could be way easier and way better than trying to hire someone that's not working for the company. Because um, I think, I mean, yes, someone can have all this IT knowledge, but if you move someone that's with inside the company to a higher role, they already probably know a lot of the infrastructure and how things work, the workflows, policies, and stuff like that. So all that training could possibly, possibly be cut down if you don't hire someone in, in the company. Brad, I wanted to say thank you to you um, for doing this. Uh, you're always so awesome with all of the little tidbits you give us, and we learned so much from you. Uh, I'm going to pass it over to Danish. Uh, he wants to do a little demo. Yeah, so basically, I'm going to show you a screen demo where if people are interested in doing this in communities, uh, what we already provide for free or doing the labs. I think somebody asked a question that do you guys offer labs like hands-on labs? So I'm just going to show um, before this, yes, the uh, the website is paid solution. The community is free solution. Before you do anything or think of anything, make sure to do your own research uh, when you are going into payments or anything like that. This is all about research. If you want to go and get these services, then uh, it's going to cost you a certain amount. And we're pretty clear about it with the services. And then I'm going to first show you the free stuff, just so everybody understand that there is free before you start paying things. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And if you guys can let me know um, the screen, if it's, everything is okay. Can you guys see I just want to say, well done, see is uh, doing that. I um, When I first joined Job Skillshare, I swear to God, uh, Danish was like, just go check out the free stuff. And I'm like, I just want to pay you to teach me. And he was like, go <laughs> check out the free stuff. Um, so this is legit. Yeah, I mean, we don't, we don't like to kind of like sell or try to do this so people can get in and then get disappointed. We want them to do their free research before they come to us because we want that, that oh, I love this because I found something really cool now. I, then that's the whole part of community run platform versus a corporate product type of thing. So we don't do that in this platform. So the first thing is 
going to YouTube, type jobs for sure, and then go into, can you guys see my screen? And, and then type jobs for sure, and you will see jobs for sure community. Go ahead and click on subscribe and click on playlist. This is where you will have that 1000 plus videos for free. For example, if somebody say, I want to start learning like how Haifa have paid like a thousand dollars for the training, it's available the same amount of the same training is available right here. Free IT support training day one to day four. It's a 15 hour worth long training for free for people who think that, hey, I have my own lab. Let me convert. Let me learn from scratch. How are they teaching? This is like we're teaching things in a, such an unprofessional, I would say, way that like this is IT, this is ID, this is this, this is this. And we're using these terms, non-technical terms. This is going to be the playlist, okay? And we will share these links later on. If you come to Discord and you say, hey, can you, add, can you give me those links directly? I'll just come to Discord and we will share. If you guys can share the Discord links, please, I will uh, appreciate it. And then after this, you have all this playlist right here. You want to go advanced, then go to this 60 uh, videos, network administrator videos. So recently somebody commented that I finished this training and I, I, it actually helped me with CCNA certification. Even though this training, Kamran created it for Network Plus, but our way of teaching uh, certifications type of uh, modules or anything like that has nothing to do with you passing a paper. We want to make sure you are good at job like you go and you say oh i learned these things a little more realistic way so then you have this all other playlists right here available for interviews for more advanced stuff just just look around whatever you think is more important to you just go for it it's too much out there bradley's story is uh saved right here half a story is also saved over here right here uh, so you guys can come to this playlist and just click on it and then you will see these videos after later on uh, things like that. So next channel, I want to uh, talk about KevTech. His channel is super good for you to, to get that quick skills in a quick format. You learn not only just skills, LinkedIn. Uh, he, he, he invites a lot of mentors out there of different channels. So you get this little overall picture in his channel. So go ahead and subscribe to him. Join his Discord I think it's it's like if you're watching JSS and you come back to KevTech, you're probably going to see same videos like overlapping with each other, but then different styles, different ideas, different formats. Uh, and it's like a relearning and there are more new things in each channel that we have different things going on. So even though we're same, but at the same time, both have very different values to give you for your career. So both are free. Different and then we have troubleshooting. Exactly. Troubleshooting and his community is a lot more lively when, when you need help. Like, okay, I want to I want to help with something, an issue or something like that. Then I think that's the best community to join the Discord. So definitely check that out. These two are the, the channels that we are using. Then we have other channels like Zach has a very good channel, IT Career Questions. There are many other channels out there. We will post that in our Discord community. So join that and then direct, like if you want to contact Haifas or follow her in her channel or LinkedIn, like this video description, all of the people that you see over here, our links like Bradley's uh, new website will be shared in the description. So this is all free stuff for now. If you want to become a JSS member, now this is money right here, right? So you, if you want to say, I want to do something like Bradley or Hafers, like, and these are members. They, I think Bradley is still a premium member, if I believe, right? Um, you can correct me. So, so they have these lab accesses. At some point, they were members. So they did use all of these resources, the powerful resources that we give our direct members who come and say, you know what? Now guide me. You know, I need lab. I need server. Whatever you guys were talking about. Is there a way that I can just kind of get into and start learning? So in JSS, when you become a member, of course, we will always recommend premium membership. The reason for that is labs. You get all the labs that we provide in our platform in the premium membership. And if you want to just go with the light membership, then we give all of these uh, powerful courses. And that reminded me something, by the way, guys, we are an official partner with IT Pro TV now, and we are strategic partners. So we're not trying to sell like their licenses or anything, we their content is in JSS right now. So in next 30 days, you will see 25 plus modern courses in JSS in these memberships. So that's Azure, Office 365, um, PowerShell, um, you know, uh, Windows 2019 server, some powerful stuff is going on in JSS. So once you join in, if somebody asks me now these days, 
I'm new to IT. Just show me one thing. Let's let's not talk about too many courses over here. Let's not talk about too many stuff over here. Just show me one thing that I can just start right away. That would be you coming to JSS, becoming a member, click on roadmaps. We created this because of the pain that a lot of people have when they follow different type of courses and labs, because this is one of the things that a lot of platforms don't do well, is that we always give information, this, 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 but it's there has no like map or visual approach towards technology, right? Learning. So we created this map for all everybody. Now, so let's say if you want to become in that IT profession from scratch, you will start this a roadmap. What is a roadmap? A roadmap is basically a combination of labs and courses in a road format. So you will come over here and you will start the map. So once you start the map, what will happen, it will open a map for you. So I'm going to wait for that to come up. There you go. So now you see on the top, you will see a start roadmap. So now you see, you know where to start. This is your starting point. You need to finish the IT fundamental course and the lab with that. And basically our content is also targeting certification hands-on. So you're not just learning certification just by theoretical method anymore, like slide, 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 slide. And then you're like, okay, I, I just got all this information, but what do I do with it? So with the IT fundamental course, you got this lab right here. So once you finish it, it's gonna change the data right here. And then you kind of continue the map till you finish it. This is gonna hit Active Directory, ticketing system, PDQ, blah, 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 every single thing in a roadmap format. When somebody asks us that I want to just start from scratch and every single career that we have touched so far or the uh, the roles, we have created roadmaps for that. So if you want to become more advanced tech, then you are going to go with advanced roadmaps. For example, like IT administrator roadmap. This is going to add networking and a little bit of server, a little bit of AWS fundamentals. So now you're becoming that sysadmin. You're touching that transitioning skills at the fundamental level. Then we have created hybrid systems administration roadmaps, and then we have cloud system administration roadmap. And finally, we have a Cisco network administration roadmap. You will, When you get to this point, then you will know exactly which roadmap you need to pick for yourself because now your, your vendor you're targeting a vendor specific skills later on. So this is what we have done for our members. And once you get in there, it's super easy now. Uh, and if you still have problems, then you just call and say, hey, I need some help directly on the phone. I mean, this is what we charge for, right? We have to charge for that stuff. But anyways, uh, if you uh, do your research before you come become our members, uh, do 100% research before you pay even a single dollar and then make these decisions. This is just to give you an idea. You can go to a different platforms and maybe try to find similar things to, to make it easy for you. And that's how we all learn uh, when we want to get into a little more uh, detail. And this is on JSS. Yes, this is on JSS. You just have to go to JSS, click on the membership, become a member. And then once you get in, then this is the dashboard that I'm showing you where you can access the courses directly, practice labs from here, uh, and the roadmaps directly from uh, here. So for example, let's just click on this roadmap, like a server, uh, Azure cloud administration roadmap. If somebody wants to become that modern skills that we were talking about right now. So you see it start with cloud fundamentals, um, uh, as 104, and then it goes into more labbings uh, later on, like for security and Azure, blah, blah, blah. So, it, and then on the bottom, we did this funny thing. We added like messages. So if you're at 20%, it's going to tell you something. Hey, push yourself. You know, you're there. Uh, and, and these messages will come to your email too to engage you more because we feel like you have a problem where, uh, uh, not me, like not you, like everybody have a problem where you start something so technical and then you lose that interest later on. Mm -hmm. and, and because there's less engagement, then a lot of people leave programs. So we want to engage people now by sending them emails and, and uh, telling them what to do uh, in this. And that's it from my side. And if you guys have anything else, uh, let's just do a round, quick round for admins. And let's see what you guys think about this whole session today. I'm gonna stop sharing the screen. Pizza. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, that was fun. That was fun. <laughs> I was gonna go for it right now. <laughs> I thought yeah, you were gonna say toner. No, no, pizza. That was good. It was good. Uh, it was good to see Brad. Um, uh, be successful with with uh, sysadmin. It de definitely, uh, I tell people that it motivates the hell out of me. I think it motivates the hell out of everyone here because it's like, man, if you could do that, I could do that. So it motivates everybody. So 
thank you thank you brad for sharing your uh success story uh sharing your what you have learned in your job since every company is different so it's good that you know we pick people's brains and we bounce ideas off of each other so thank you for uh sharing that information that's all i have to say and thank you donish for having me here and thank you guys for uh being here today it's fun I Steven? Guess yeah, I guess I'll go next. Um, yeah, thank you very much, Don, for having me. Um, and I just want to piggyback off one of those first 15 videos, I believe it was. That is an excellent video course. I actually watched every damn second of that, all those 15 videos that are done, just so you know. Uh, but uh, they are very informative, and it's a good way to lift your career off to know what it's all about. He explains it very well. He breaks it down. I would say take the time, take a look at those videos, and then you know, figure out what you want to do and then go ahead and maybe become a member or something like that. But um, those 15 videos are very, very well put together. I mean, he did a lot of work to get those videos up there. And you could see that as the videos went on, he got a lot better on the videos and he explained the links a lot better. So it was very, very good. So definitely take a look at those. That's And other than that, Bradley, I think you're going to do great things in life. I mean, you're very young. And uh, the sky's a friggin' limit, man. Just keep on going. And one day you'll be a Donish or something like that, sitting there, maybe doing something like this. You know, you, it's going to be. A Not good. me. I think better than we're looking at him to be like. Oh, above maybe. Because I, I told him when you when you start making that uh, big money, then I think I'm going to come back to you. Really <laughs> some money, you know. He's going to, you know, drive it, uh, you know, drive his uh, up here like, you know, Mercedes Benz or something like that to pick him up. But Bradley, good luck on your job. I mean. Like I said, you're doing fantastic. Just keep it going. Thank you. Thank you again to everyone for joining. Uh, Donish, I'll pass it back to you so you can wrap it up. So last, Brad, Brad um, with you, we're going to end it. Do you, what do you think so far and uh, any final tips for people and uh, anything for us? Like, you know, we're also learning from, from you. Do you, you have any suggestions for us to change something, whatever? Um, I would say just... Keep labbing and, and if, you're, if you're trying to break in, keep on applying. I mean, the, there's definitely no shortage, shortage in IT or anything. Um, I mean, as, as for like cap tech and like job skills and stuff, I don't see many suggestions on my part. Um, Donners, I think breaking, like um, like I saw like vSphere 7 coming to your platform and stuff, I think bringing more modern I mean, and like kind of like more up-to-date things um, would definitely help it out. Um, Kevin, I think maybe, like you said, you're learning Linux, uh, maybe some Linux videos out there. I like it. I, I, I know your channel is really dedicated to like helping people get an IT and stuff, yeah. um, but maybe add some like sysadmin stuff on there. Um, and, and it can definitely help people out. I know you have a big, a, a big connection based on YouTube and stuff. So I know it'll definitely. And, and one, thing, one thing I want to add before I forget is I already requested Bradley to be a part of our sysadmin program that are going to start like in three months. So he's he's already a part of our IT pro uh, development program and with KevTech and what we are doing right now. Me and KevTech, we're doing this uh, collaborative program together. And I already told him that you will be a part of it. And the same admins, you're going to see him in that because by then he will have a lot of experience, three, three more months. Uh, and he's going to bring a lot of value to that. So uh, I hope Bradley, you don't, you don't back out on us now, okay? But thank you so much for people who are watching us on live chat. Uh, thank you. Uh, and, and at the end of the day, let me tell you that the people who support us, and I'm not talking about just people who are members, who are paid members. Yes, you, you, you support what we do on the site end of it. But the people who subscribe to us, for, like the, the members who push us or motivate us, uh, the Discord members in Kefta community or the LinkedIn followers, we cannot be here without you. This is the people who just follow us and show us love, show us good comments and everything. This is not about money. This is about you just saying, hey, thank you um, because of you, we did this. And then we say thank you because of you motivating us, we're doing something. It's that just the connection between us is something that I want to thank every single person for being out there. Uh, and every single thing that you have done in this platform or, or supported us, we, we appreciate it. Even just the like button we appreciate that like a million dollar right now. So thank you so much. This community will grow together with KevTech and everybody over here. And every single person over here is like a brand on, a, on their own. I always tell them to create something. And Brad is 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 right now, he himself is a, is a brand in this whole episodes. And one day we feel like he's going to provide so much value to the next generation that's coming. 
and kind of lead that next step for new uh, modern technologies that he's learning. And I feel like that's where that's what we want to bring him so we can fast pace things for new people who think they want to get into this uh, modern and more advanced IT positions. So at the end, thank you so much, everybody, for joining in all the admins. As usual, you guys are the best. And what is, what is that? Yeah. <laughs> all right. Thank you, everyone. Take care and have a great weekend. I am going to go ahead and end this.